Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So this week we're going to be fixing some movement bugs in our code. Now a bug is when our code is working the way it was written, but something is happening that we hadn't intended. This is the first bug, and let's see if you can figure out what's going wrong. It only works when we're in the blue soul mode. Now watch carefully. Look at the heart. Everything seems to be fine. <gasps> Do you see that? We're defying gravity. How is that possible? We can do it again. Now what I'm actually doing is I'm holding down, uh, at the moment I'm holding down left. So I'm pushing into the left wall, which means I should be falling right once the gravity turns in that direction, but it's not making me fall. Let's have a look at our code and figure out why this is so. So go to your heart and look around until you find your define jump code. This is all the code for our gravity and also for our jumping. So what allows us to jump is this jumps variable. As long as we have at least one in our jumps variable, we're allowed to jump. And how do we recharge our jump? Well, it's when we touch the box. Now this works well most of the time. When our heart falls down onto the floor, it touches the box, which then allows it to jump again. What we didn't realize though, was if our heart's halfway down our box and is able to jump up and touch the ceiling, it resets its jump as well, because it's still touching the box. It's just touching it the wrong way. And that allows us to jump again and again and again and again. And each time we do, we reset our jumps, which allows us to infinitely float on the ceiling, which is not how we want our gravity to work at all. Thankfully, there's a nice easy way to fix this. Get your set jumps to one or even set jumps to two if you've got a double jump in your game and move that up one. Then go to control and get out an if then. Drag that across and put it right here. Get this set to velocity to zero. This is what stops us from being able to fall through our box or rise through it if we jump into the ceiling. Then go to operators, get out a less than operator and put it in between the if and the then. Go to variables and get out velocity, put it into the first socket and then change this 50 into a zero. So what does this mean? Well, if our velocity variable is more than zero, that means the heart is rising, like it does when it's jumping. But if our velocity is less than zero, that means the heart is falling. So when we touch the box, it asks the question, is your velocity less than zero? Are you falling? If you are falling, then we will give you your jump back. Okay, let's give that a bit of a test, shall we? Um, so we'll see if we can still stick to the ceiling when our gravity changes directions. I'm holding down left right now and no, I can no longer exploit that little glitch. I'm still holding left. So what it did there was as I jumped into the ceiling, it asked me if I was falling and because I was not falling, it did not recharge my jump, meaning I cannot infinitely jump into ceilings anymore. So there's that bug fixed. Now, the next problem we're going to solve isn't going to affect everyone. It doesn't affect my project, but there are a bunch of people in the comments who've said that their hearts can get stuck in the edges of the box, especially while they're the blue soul. Now, why is that? It's actually to do with the costume. So my heart here, this costume is 125 pixels by 123 pixels, very similar numbers, which means that the costume, if we were to, if we were to cover it, has very similar lengths on one dimension as it does on the other. So I've covered it with this square and you can see this looks like a very even square. This side is a very similar length to this side. If we had a blue sole that was stretched where one of the sides was longer than the other, like this, let's see what happens when we change direction. So we're going to see our extra long blue sole. Now, watch closely. Can you see what just happened there? Our blue sole is now stuck in the edge. 
Now one way to fix this would just be to squish your graphics and make sure that its width and its height were the same. But that's not a very good solution and it involves you having to mess around with graphics that you might already be pretty happy with and we can fix this in the code. Now all of the movement code in our heart works with the same basic steps. First, the movement happens and then it asks the question, am I touching the box? And if I am, it moves out of the box again. Now we never see this actually happen. This is called a collision check and this is the code that generally prevents our heart from entering the box. The problem that we run into is that because we rotate our heart, if it's longer on one edge than it is on the other, when it rotates, one side can get stuck in the edge of the box. Now there's actually a lot of ways to fix this problem, but they all change the way the heart looks. But if we make that change up here before the collision code gets run, and then we change it back to look the way that we want it to look at the bottom, we will never see the difference. The collision code will be run with these new settings, but it will look the same to us. One solution could be up here to change the costume into a perfect square and then change it back into the heart here. But we actually have a lot of code that relies upon the costume of our heart and we could easily change that and use a variable to keep track of things like being a red soul or a blue soul. But there's a nice easy solution. Go to motion and get out set rotation style left right. Put it off by itself for now and change this left right into don't rotate. Now currently this heart, if we rotate it, it spins to face the direction that it's rotating. But watch what happens if I double click on this set rotation style to don't rotate. Now, no matter what direction I spin this heart, it doesn't update its appearance to face that direction. Now this is great for the collision code because it's going to prevent the heart from spinning and getting part of itself stuck in a wall. So take this set rotation style to don't rotate and put it right here. So it's happening before our collision check. Then go to the very bottom of the code and get out set rotation style to all around. This means that we the player will always see the heart after it has been set back into rotation style all around. To us, it will seem like nothing has happened. All this code happens so fast, we don't see it. We'll just see the end result, where the heart is facing in the correct direction. So now all we need to do is go to our move up, down, left and right code and put in the same set rotation styles at the beginning and the end. So just look for that in your code. Now. We're going to have to do this four different times, aren't we? So we could just get out set rotation style to don't rotate, put it underneath define move left and get out set rotation style, change it back to all around and do that four times. Let's zoom out a little bit and put these all in. Make sure the top one says don't rotate, the bottom says all around. All right, let's give that a test, shall we? And we'll see if we can still get stuck in the walls. Okay, can you see that we can't get stuck in the walls anymore, even when I go into the corners like I did before? So that's solved our problem. Now this next part is entirely optional, but I was looking at these four my blocks and thinking, oh, there's a lot of repetition here and it takes up a lot of space. And I think we can actually turn these four different my blocks into one my block with some inputs, with all the knowledge that we've gained using inputs in our different my blocks. So you don't have to do this bit if you don't want to, but it is a cool exercise in reducing four functions down into one. So we're going to get this define move left code and just pull it off for now, move that off by itself and we're gonna make a new my block. We're gonna to go to my blocks and click on make a block and we're going to call this move and then we're going to put a space and then an X 
then click on add an input and we're going to call this input x then text add a label and call this y then add an input and call that y then text add a label and call this key and then add an input and call that key then press ok now get this move x y key and put it right here now let's have a little bit of a closer look here at our new my block we want it to be able to do both x movement and y movement and change the control depending on this input in key here so get key and put it right over when key pressed then let's get this minus player speed put it off to the side and this player speed and put it off to the side let's get out our x and put it here let's go to operators and get out a minus operator and then get out our x and put it in the second socket then go to motion and get out our change y and another change y and put them right underneath the change x's then get our y input and put it here let's duplicate this minus and have our minus y here then all we need to do is get out our new move x y key blocks let's get out four of them and fill in these inputs so we've already got our player speed variable and our minus player speed so if we get out player speed and put it in our move x then all we need to do is put this key as right arrow then if we get out another player speed and put it here this needs to be up arrow and if we get this minus player speed and put it into our x this key needs to be left arrow and if we get a minus player speed and put it into the y this key needs to be down arrow now make sure everything's in the right place make sure the x's and y's are in the right place and the minuses make sure all of these are spelled correctly and then when all that's done we can replace our move up move left move right move down blocks with these four blocks instead so we've got our red soul movement up here we'll move these off to the side and we'll move these here we're going to duplicate these again and go across to the blue soul movement so let's get our up arrow and pop that there and our right arrow needs to go here our down arrow needs to go here and our left arrow needs to go here and let's give it a test make sure that the movement still works the way we want it to we need to test the blue soul movement as well as the red soul movement yep that all seems to be working the same let's see the red soul movement yes that's all working the same way as well that's good now if you can't get your define move x y key block to work don't worry about it you can just rebuild your move left block like so just duplicate everything underneath move right but swap the minus player speed with the player speed and then you can go back to using your move down move left move right blocks but if everything is working for you fine what you can do is if you get rid of your move up left down you can then get rid of these defines as well and now look where we had four my blocks we just have the have the one repetition in coding is generally a bad thing if you can try to be efficient with your code try to reduce your code down and not repeat yourself and that always leads to cleaner more easily readable code and look at that look at all that nice white space and that's everything for this week 
Now, next week, we're going to make a start on something that people have been asking for for a long time. We're going to move away from the fight mechanics, and we're going to start working on our act, item, and mercy mechanics. So subscribe and ring the bell to see the next episode. Let me know in the comments what you would like me to do next, or if you need any help with your project. And aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other, and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.